chain of health food stores. In a society where white bread, wine, and sauces extraordinaire dominate the dinner table, Tapi's investment in the health food enterprise was a bold one. But then so were the investments in the other 44 companies he owns. So why not write a book about it all? Winning. And why not star in your own TV commercials? It's not only batteries that keep the 41-year-old Tapi marching to the music of profit and gain. Tapi is France's true success story. And he quite often is in the news, on the news, at night. This is the Lee Iacocca of France, if you will. And the guy is everywhere. Just look out your window. Especially during the Tour de France. When Tapi shows up, you can forget Eno and Le Mans. These folks want a piece of the guy who's bought them both. It was Tapi who brought Le Mans and Eno together. What a perfect match. The talented young American and the legendary Frenchman. Last year, Tapi's Franco-American cycling tandem had the press in a photo-opportunistic frenzy. Smiles all around, most of the time anyway. Here at the Tour, Francis Lee Iacocca becomes cycling's George Steinbrenner, master of the bike racing universe. Planning, scrutinizing, orchestrating. Nothing escapes Tapi's glance. And no one misses a chance to watch the man who has done much to shape the modern-day Tour de France with his partner par excellence, Bernard Hinault. Involved? Yes, the boss gets involved. And in the cycling world, that means sticking your head out of a moving vehicle to shout at your coach. It's the powerful Tapi who prides himself on putting together this French team led by Bernard Hinault. For in the minds of the French, Eno will always be number one, no matter who rides on his team. And where has that left Greg LeMond? If I really, if I want to be frank, I, I probably should have never come on La Vie Claire because I feel I'm too close to Bernard Eno, too close to his strength, that I end up always having to take the second position, and uh, it's my fault. Well, during the tour, Tapi was asked on the news if it wouldn't be better for Le Mans to win the tour so Tapi could get added business exposure in the States. It would be better for our American market if Eno wins. Well, the time for arguments is over. Here in the Alps, there will soon be enough more important questions answered in the Tour de France. It's day 18 and time for the race to Alpe d'Huez. Bernard Tapi is on hand. It's clear that if Bernard Eno is going to make his move on Le Mans, it will have to come here. Eno has two choices, attack Greg Le Mans or help him keep his yellow jersey. The American has spent his first full night in the yellow jersey, and he would like some team support. I'm hoping that I'll have some support from him and uh, in the coming days, because I feel like you know, mountaintop finishes, I'm riding stronger than he is, and I think I should maybe take another minute out of him today. I, you know, I'm, I'm, I'm thinking that. Actually, the man in second place to Le Mans in the overall standings is Switzerland's Urs Zimmerman. Zimmerman is two and a half minutes behind Greg, and Eno is another 20 seconds back. Another of the top riders is Spain's Pedro Delgado, but the pace of the favorites has put him fully eight minutes behind. Check-in time for this crucial trip into the Alps, and for the first time ever, the man to beat is an American. After the opening day in the Alps, Le Mans has the yellow jersey, but it's now Ursa Zimmermann who is second and Eno back in third. Day two in the Alps is the most unkind of all, with three of the highest passes. The Col de Galibier at 8,600 feet, the highest road in France. Then the road snakes its way up the Col de la Croix de Fer, another brute at 6,800 feet. And after only a brief rest before the final twisting agony of Alpe d'Huez, a mere 5,800 feet. But on the glaciers here, you can ski all summer. Packed together, the field head off into the belly of the Alps, not knowing what the day will bring. For Le Monde, it will be his first test in yellow, and now his attention swings to the Swiss champion Zimmermann, just over two minutes back in second place. Zimmermann is now the biggest threat to the yellow jersey, but not far behind lurks the Badger. Is he thinking while he rides he could profit from the attention paid the other two? 
If they watch each other, perhaps Eno will be able to slip away unnoticed. The mountains will hold the answers to these questions, and the spectators wait for the secrets to unfold. and the roads go higher, Eno is still a force and with typical panache, he teases Le Mans to take the lead. The mountains are a great leveller, but Eno signals to Le Mans that he won't be content to ride in this pack much longer. Bernard Eno is like a time bomb ticking. The man who has won this race five times, the only question now is when is he set to go off? Switzerland's Urs Zimmerman is a rocket on the high-speed descent of the Alps. Coming into the race, Zimmerman was 224 behind Le Mans and displayed his unusual technique for playing catch-up. The climbers have now become daredevils. And the pace of the race has been dictated by how much risk one is willing to take. Slung out over miles, the pack of 143 takes on a look of a giant pinball machine run wild. And the race begins all over again. And while Greg LeMond rides close to Earth as Zimmerman, the bomb explodes and Bernard Eno launches into the attack. Peddling a gear that many riders would use going only downhill, the Frenchman shows his real strength. It's left to Zimmerman to chase, but will LeMond help? And with the rhythm of a metronome, Eno pushes home an attack he's clearly planned all day. Lamont plays the perfect teammate and rides behind Zimmerman. But what's he thinking? Surely he remembers the road to Po a week ago when Eno won the day by over five minutes. That margin now will cost Lamont the tour. Zimmerman is now sandwiched between two teammates. The Swiss rider is in isolation and tiring. While Eno speeds ahead, Le Mans takes advice from his team car. And despite Eno's attack, Le Mans seems strangely tranquil. Eno, free again from the field, rides like the wind. His immediate ambition now is to gain time, and lots of it. with the ski station of Alpe d'Huez on the snow line, who says he won't? Zimmerman is now too tired, and Eno's gained enough time to take second place. His next target will be the yellow jersey of Greg LeMond. And do you think Greg doesn't know that? Taking food on the move, the break is made, and Eno settles in to his rhythm. But a glance over his shoulder, and Greg LeMond is no longer with Zimmerman, but stimulated by the most coveted symbol in France. He joins Eno on the attack, helped by his Canadian friend, Steve Bauer. On the hardest day in the Tour de France, three members of the La Vie Claire team have formed at the front, and both Eno and Le Mans are again playing the leading roles in one of the finest races for years. The route continues to wind its way over the Alpine peaks. This is a day for the strongest. And on the slopes of the Col de la Croix de Fer, the rocks blossom with people witnessing one of the finest battles between the world's two greatest riders. 
swept aside by a private feud that Zimmerman knows dreams of being the first Swiss winner in 35 years are gone. While Bernard Eno and Greg LeMond have proved beyond all doubt that they have no equals in this race. But the question now, neither of them yet know the answer to, is which one will be first at Paris. The climb of Alpe d'Huez is still to come, and it may yet hold the answer. With a four-minute gap already open today, these two men no longer have any other competition except each other. Greg LeMond and Bernardi know one unable to beat the other on the climb to Alpe d'Huez. They now choose to ride as one. Alone together in an arena that all at once engulfs them while not obscuring their superhuman strength. The roaring gauntlet greets these men, each of whom wants to win the Tour de France. But neither can do it alone. It was one year ago when Le Mans helped Dino win his fifth tour. And later, Le Mans who burst into tears after realizing his unselfish act cost him a chance at winning the Tour de France. And it was a bruised and broken Bernard Dino who after having his yellow jersey saved by the American, pledged to help him to be his willing team ally in this year's race. Today, here in the Alps, alone together, Dino and Le Mans had a yellow jersey between them, but this time, it was Greg's. And maybe it was gratitude, maybe a newfound friendship that carried the two across the mountaintop finish line, arms raised after obliterating the rest of the competition. Eno received the official stage win, but it didn't matter because Le Mans retained the yellow leader's jersey. No one knew quite what to make of what had happened on the way to Alpe d'Huez. But one thing was certain, Bernard Eno was now the one and only challenge to the yellow jersey. The standings after 18 days looked like this, Eno 245 back. Le Mans teammate behind him, reason enough for Greg to be pleased before the next race. That was not the case. I worry about it. I tell you, I'm very paranoid. And, uh, I tell you, I've had sleepless nights the last couple of days. I'm praying that everything goes, goes well. It's sad that I'm here. I'm winning my first Tour de France. And if I was any other rider, not an American, it wouldn't even be a question I'd win. Because there's still a question. Le Mans paranoia, not unfounded. The morning headlines, Eno declares the tour is not over.